Is there such a thing as a good hacker? We'll explore that question in today's lesson about hackers and hacking. This lecture is the first in a 12-part series about information security. But in many ways, this lesson provides the motivation for all the other ones. If no one was trying to break into computer systems, there would be no need for information security. But as anyone who glances at recent headlines will have noticed, there are lots of people who go online and break into computer systems. In the public's perception, these computer break-in artists are called hackers. In this lesson, we'll explore the questions of who are these hackers and what is hacking all about. Information security differs from other technology areas in the sense that this is the only area in which some outside force is actively trying to undermine your work. Other areas of technology, like programming, networking, or hardware engineering, present challenges and problems to solve, but none of these problems include a human antagonist who's trying to steal your information or alter your systems. The discipline of information security begins with this antagonist. In designing or managing your systems, you have to assume the existence of an opponent who is trying to break in. As the ancient Chinese war theorist Sun Tzu put it, you have to know your enemy. When bringing up the idea of an enemy or an antagonist who's trying to break into your systems, most people instinctively think in terms of good guys versus bad guys. If someone is trying to break into our information, most of us would think of that as being bad. Likewise, most of us think of ourselves as being basically good on some level. So the question of hacking appears to be one of good versus evil, right versus wrong. Or like it's always portrayed in Hollywood westerns, white hats versus black hats. Not so fast though, there are many who think of hacking as a good thing, and we need to consider what basis there may be for such positive views on hacking. Open source expert Eric Raymond, for example, supports hacking as a good thing. Raymond even offers a website to demonstrate how to become a hacker. In Raymond's view, the term hacker is essentially rooted in the ideals of curiosity or exploration. According to Raymond, the world is full of fascinating problems waiting to be solved, and hacker culture is dedicated to solving those problems. In Raymond's view of right and wrong, freedom is good and boredom and drudgery are evil. From this perspective, hackers are explorers and inventors whose activities benefit society on many levels. As Raymond puts it, hackers built the internet. Hackers make the World Wide Web work. Chinese cybersecurity expert Wang Qi, a CEO of a leading cybersecurity company, would also agree with Eric Raymond that hacking can be good. Wang Qi led the first Chinese team to win the mobile Pwn to Own contest, a computer hacking contest held annually since 2007 at the Kansek West Security Conference. As Wang puts it, most people mistake the word hackers for the word crackers. Hackers are associated with those wearing the white hats and crackers wear the black hats. This distinction is fairly common and widely accepted throughout the industry. Many technical experts in the U.S. participate in hackathons or hacking spaces and pride themselves on their hacking ability. Given, however, that among hackers there is also a subset of individuals that perform criminal activities, these individuals are known as crackers and are typically engaged in illegal or destructive hacking. In recapping, a white hat hacker is someone who uses hacking tools in a manner that is legal and fully authorized. In fact, many companies hire white hat hackers as penetration testers to try to find weaknesses in their own corporate networks. These penetration testers are known as Certified Ethical Hackers, or CEH for short. An individual can become a Certified Ethical Hacker by obtaining a technical certification offered by the EC Council, an international consortium of e-commerce companies. Although there is no universally accepted standard definition of white versus black, there is another distinction referred to as gray hat hackers. Eric Raymond defines gray hat hackers as individuals not out to break the law, but they are willing to bend the law from time to time in the name of discovery. Gray hats see their mission as in some sense being above or beyond the law, or maybe more precisely, ahead of the law. 
Another group that absolutely sees themselves as above the law are hacktivists. Hacktivism combines technical hacking with political activism. Hacktivism takes the attitude that the ends justify the means. So in their minds, if the cause is good, then it's justified. In recent years, hacktivist groups like Anonymous or LulzSec have been in the news due to their exploits. Notice, however, that although hacktivists may see their own activities as being justified, they may also be breaking the law and be guilty of committing a crime. For example, in late 2013, hacktivist Jeremy Hammond was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison for his role in a wide variety of computer break-ins. In court, Hammond stated that his activities were acts of civil disobedience, rightly aimed against the expansion of the growing national security surveillance network. However, the sentencing judge disagreed, telling Hammond, there's nothing high-minded or public-spirited about causing mayhem. When it comes to the topic of cyber warfare, one nation's mayhem is another nation's patriotic resistance movement. In the world of great power cyber competition, the white or black hats of the different nations' respective hackers mean about as much as the colors of home and away jerseys in any professional sport. It's basically a question of root, root, root for the home team. If our hackers break into some competing nation's computer system and cause mischief, that can only be a good thing, right? On the other hand, if their hackers are breaking into our systems, then words like espionage, treason, or cyber attack are the ones that come to mind. In many ways, great power conflict is an ethics-free zone. So simple thinking about good versus bad, or white hat versus black hat, fails to capture the essence of the situation. Is it surprising that nations who threaten each other with nuclear weapons also hack into each other's computer systems? We should probably not be all that surprised. So although most people think of hackers and hacking as being bad, we can also see there are dimensions of hacking that win approval. If we equate hacking with scientific discovery, security research, solving technical problems, testing our own systems, standing up for civil liberties, it seems like hackers should be praised and rewarded. In China and in the US, talented hackers can win scholarships for advanced study and receive lucrative contracts as security consultants. So what have we learned about hackers and hacking? First of all, hackers have many motivations. Different people will have different views about whether certain types of hacking are justified or not. In the eyes of the law, however, it's really a much simpler question. If you have permission, in the form of a legal contract, to hack into a computer system, then your activities are both legal and ethical. Without such permission, hacking is a criminal activity. For purposes of this course, we're going to keep it fairly simple. We are going to be focusing on cyber crime and considering that anyone who hacks into our systems really is a bad guy. Or if you prefer a more value neutral way to understand what IT security is all about, consider it as a contest or a game. The system administrator is the defense, the hackers are on offense. The hacker's job is to break in. The system administrator needs to keep the hackers out. Remember, Sun Tzu did not advise us to hate our enemy. He advised us to know our enemy. To defend systems against hackers, you need to understand how hackers think. I hope this lesson has helped you understand just a little bit better what motivates different types of hackers. In our next session, we'll focus on the people behind the hack and exactly how the hacker compromises the system and breaks in. We'll also cover network hacking attacks that rely on automated tools and programs. And we'll also focus on the threat that malware poses for information security.